Welcome back to the channel. We're an adventure with Nick and Rachel and we bring you the best places to hike and explore in the southeast and more. So if you're into that kind of thing, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell because we bring you weekly videos just like this. Today we are in Old Stone Fort State Archaeological Park in Tennessee and we are doing the Enclosure Wall Trail. It's an ancient Native American ceremonial site and it's 2.7 miles long. So let's go check it out. So the enclosure wall was built by Native Americans, early Native Americans, over like close to 2,000 years ago. Um, and the reason this park is called Old Stone Fort is because settlers um, didn't believe that it was built by Native Americans. They thought it was built by settlers that had come before them as a fort to protect their area. But um, as we've learned about history and learned about the area, um, it became obvious that it was built by early Native Americans as a ceremonial site and the wall encloses a 50 acre area so like this area and like that big field that we saw in the beginning um, is enclosed within this uh, like enclosure wall and so we'll get to see part of that enclosure wall um, and they have a museum uh, that you can go in and you can watch like a video they've got like a lot of things that they've excavated from the area which is pretty cool so definitely check out that museum whenever you come like knot on the side of this tree is called black knot. It's a fungus it's caused by Apiosporina and it grows like this big like tumor looking thing on the side of trees or around branches um, and things and so it'll cause like insect infestation that'll end up killing that tree. If you've ever seen that, that is black knot. Tumors for trees. Tumors for trees. <laughs> and it's um, so it's like cherry trees and plum trees. Uh, it's like one of the bigger, biggest like killers of those trees. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. So you can kind of see it through the trees right now, but there's a waterfall back there. There's actually like two waterfalls that we passed, and there's some like steps down to this little path down here that you can see it a little bit better. Uh, but it is kind of hard to see it right now because the leaves are still on the trees. So it'd be a really good park to come back to in the winter so that you can see it when the leaves are off the trees. But I mean, just a little bit that I can see, it looks like it's a really beautiful waterfall. So right back here is the longest continuous segment of the mound wall. Um, and it stretches for nearly 2,000 feet um, between the Big and Little Duck rivers. Um, and it this the field is right back behind us and it encloses that 50 acres so right now we are hiking under that wall and it's like it's hard if you was to walk through here you wouldn't even really be able to tell that that's what it was so um, i guess that's why they had such a hard time <laughs> it's like thinking that it was like someone you know they probably didn't even know what it was hmm. for a, a really really long time but it's apparently what do you say 2,000 foot that way mm -hmm. it's a long ways yep. there's a gigantic open field which I haven't filmed yet but I'll show you that as we're leaving the the trail around the wall we are un we, we chose the trail to go under the wall but you can hike one in front of it as well so you can see it above it so this big open area with the field it reminds me of the Oak Mogi Indian mounds in Macon um, and like, but there were like huge mounds and you could overlook like the big fields and vast like expanses. And, but it's like right in the middle of Macon. We did a video on it and you can definitely check it out. It's on our, um, what playlist is it on? I guess our Georgia playlist. Georgia playlist, Georgia playlist with uh, like state parks and historic mm -hmm. areas. Yeah. It's a um, really cool place to check out. There's yeah, like a there's, couple of different mounds. We go through some history that people believe that those uh creek indians that are all in like georgia like indian spring state park area and stuff like that that they were actually the mayan indians mm -hmm. that were from mexico and that there's like good evidence of support that they actually the one came here and built those mounds mm -hmm. and then they actually turned into the creek indians because there's it's a color right it's like yeah like it's called indian mayan blue, blue. Mayan blue. Yeah. and it's only found in that one place in mexico and then, and then guess where else <laughs> 
at the Indian mounds, <laughs> but that mineral is only in Mexico, so how to get there. Yeah. So yeah, if you want to check out that that video, it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I really do believe that the uh, those Creek Indians near Indian Springs and all the ones in you know Georgia, I think they were in Alabama and Florida as well, mm -hmm. are really the mines. Why? Well, just because of the evidence and stuff that we went over in that video, but you can't rewrite history. Once history has been put down in a history book, it doesn't matter how much evidence someone presents. Mm -hmm schools and like you know anybody politicians people who are in charge of that kind of stuff that, that are going to be the ones that are going to educate your children on it and stuff they don't want it to be changed they don't want it changed because if you change it that means oh well they got it wrong to begin with so how are you going to trust them yeah. and you know i mean their stuff uh, it was something something oh gosh i wish i could remember what it was but like even stuff that we learned like, yeah, I mean, now all of a sudden it's different a, or yeah, something, it's but like you know, it's disproven. I'm like, well, how much of my education <laughs> is like disproven? <laughs> yeah. But um, you know, most of the time, that's it why doesn't you matter. You gotta always stay updated and continue to learn all throughout your life. Yeah, exactly. Continue to study and read and take in information because, like, learning should be lifelong, not just from K to 12 or your college. Well, that's true, but, but what I was getting at was I'm basically also in education, so. you don't, they don't want things to change because, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They don't want it to be changed because if they got it wrong originally, that means they're probably wrong about a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And if they're wrong about a lot of things, how can you trust them? And, you know, it's going to take a, a mass, <laughs> a mass <laughs> amount of evidence to convince somebody that they were wrong to begin with. Mm -hmm. And for them to rewrite history books, rewrite science books, stuff like that. And that dude who came up with that that uh, that uh, experiment to prove that those Indians were the Mayans, he had enough evidence to convince a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I tend to believe what he's saying. And he actually commented on our video that we made. The guy who, the professor who did all that. So yeah, if y'all want to see a really cool video, you can actually look up. He did one on the History Channel, um, and you can look up, you know, his his work. And if you want to see his uh, we put his work and stuff in the link in that video, so if you want to see it, you can check it out. And they said that's the highest part of the wall. So they basically just looped, well, they do this loop a giant wall around the entire, so you can see the wall right here. So there's the field that we were filming, and this is a wall, and that's a wall. And these and little breaks are like cliffs, so they used they used the cliff, the natural landscape, yeah, to to complete their wall. That's one of them drops that I would say. All right, so here's the trail. Straight down. Here's my foot. There's our foot. There's my foot. Boom! Look how far that. <laughs> it's literally like a straight down drop, probably more than a hundred feet. You got something you can toss down in there like a little rock let's see there's a rock All the rocks up here dry, and that's because the water is coming directly out of the rock. Kind of like Rock Island State Park in Tennessee, and there's a pretty big fall coming out of that part of the rock. And this runs straight down into 
uh, little pond area here. It's pretty, really nice area. What exactly are we looking at? It's an old mill, or what's left of an old mill. A paper mill? It's at a paper mill, wrapping mill. It was called uh, Stone Fort Mill. So when we were at the beginning of the park, I seen this big um, yeah, grindstone. grindstone. I'm yeah, guessing that probably water. came from there. Yeah. It was just sitting out in the water. I could tell it was a grindstone with that little center hole. Mm -hmm. All was pretty beat up over the years, but it's still there and you could tell what it is. I thought that was pretty neat. Mm -hmm. Now we know where it came from. Yeah. But imagine how big of a like storm it took to get it down there that way unless someone threw it out that far. How many acorns are you going to drop? Why are you carrying around acorns like a little squirrel anyway? I was around that one for most of the trail. <laughs> I just like to hold them. Acorns and rocks. A nerd. <laughs> reminds me of Little River Canyon in Alabama. Yeah, there was a lot like that there. There's a lot of waterfalls in this area that are like this with the like, cliff faces and it's just falling off and looking cool. Looks really neat. So we're almost completed with this trail, so we can actually uh, close it on out right here. I like this trail. Like you get some beautiful views of water. 